I think it's best to start this video by saying that I'm recording this just as Arsenal and Manchester City have kicked off in that big game at the Etihad Stadium. So I don't exactly know what the consequences of this victory for Liverpool will be today. But ultimately, the Reds had one job today, didn't they? And it was to get three points on board so they could sit back and watch the title contenders go head to head later today on Sunday. And they absolutely got that done. And I thought, courtesy of a very, very impressive performance today, as I say. And I think it was nervy at times, yes. You know, the, the, the finish when it's 2 1 and you, you're going into those last five minutes, it's always going to be difficult, isn't it? And a, a bit of a test of the nerves. But I thought Liverpool, by and large, absolutely deserved to win this game on the performance. I think, you know, you consider the fact that Brighton, yes, they're eighth in the table and that is considered disappointing for them this season after hitting the heights last season and finishing sixth. But I still think they are such a threat and they do seem as well to me like a good matchup against Liverpool. Their style of play really seems to work against what Liverpool are trying to do. And for that reason, you know, Brighton haven't lost here at Anfield since 2019 so it tells you just how good of a matchup they are against Liverpool and how difficult they can make it at times and for that reason I think that makes Liverpool's performance all the more impressive because I think you know they concede an early goal against Danny Welbeck absolutely cracking finish at the, the cop end there and you know 1-0 down and as I say the record against Brighton is not very good it would have been easy for Liverpool to let the head drop or to, to get a little bit panicky in the play but there was no sign of that I thought dominant from start to finish and the stats actually bear that out 2.7 nine expected goals to 0.44 in Liverpool's favour 30 shots to nine in Liverpool's favour four big chances to to zero so they were absolutely dominant and as I say the scoreline didn't really reflect how dominant Liverpool were and I think that's a performance that Jurgen Klopp's going to come into his press conference and say was was absolutely fantastic even if Liverpool didn't have the goals to show for it and I think ultimately a deserved win to take Liverpool top of the Premier League or as I'm speaking they sat at the top of the Premier League and I think yeah the manager we are absolutely happy with the, the way his side have played because it's been difficult against Brighton in the past but there was no sign of that here dominant from start to finish and an absolutely deserved win as I say now I'm going to get into the players and talk about how they played and I'll start with the goalkeeper as ever and Quivine Keller it's still in goal at the moment of course because Alisson's still injured and I thought kind of quiet really because Liverpool how dominant they were there was nothing he could do about that brilliant finish that, that, that kicked the game off from Welbeck not a lot you can do about that great finish into the corner and he makes the dive and doesn't get there but uh, not, you know nothing against him for that one and, and I think a quiet game because as I say Liverpool were very very dominant they restricted Brighton to very few shots very few shots on target I think three in the end Brighton take and for that reason Kelleher didn't have a lot to do but like all great keepers when he was called upon he pulls off a brilliant save late in the game. I think it's around 10 minutes left when Dunk gets a header uh, at the Anfield Road end. It looks like it's just about to creep in the far post and Kelleher gets down and somehow tips it around the post. And that is, again, we say it against about all world-class keepers, don't we, is that they can have a quiet game where they're not really involved and their team is dominant. But you've got to be ready for that big moment. And Kelleher, massive, massive hand in Liverpool coming away with a win here, even if he wasn't getting completely peppered throughout the game. That was a, a big, big moment and it, and it very much worth it brilliant from Keller I would say now move into the defence now and start with Connor Bradley really kind of enjoyed his battle Brighton's biggest threats did really really well across the game and always sort of stretching Liverpool and make it difficult for them in 1v1 situations and I thought Bradley stood up to that really well I mean that, the fact that he did is shown in the fact he wins 11 out of 16 ground duels so that shows how much Edingwe was involved in trying to run at him. But 11 out of 16, brilliant ratio of, of, of ground duels one, which Bradley does, he does that consistently, doesn't he? He just wins his ground duels, he's involved in tackles, he, he gets stuck in. And so I would say he, he came out on top of that battle with Edingwe. And then on the other side of the ball showed everything else that he's about. Four chances created, two shots. He was just a constant menace down that, that right-hand side. And again, a big part of Liverpool being so dominant in this game and, and being on top really for, for so much of it. And he was at such an outlet down that side the way he linked up with Mohamed Salah I mean Trent Alexander-Arnold was here doing he was speaking to Sky Sports ahead of the game and, and talking about his recovery and I think maybe acknowledge that he's going to have a bit of a difficulty getting back in the side given how well Connor Bradley is playing at the moment and I thought this was a really another brilliant performance from him but we're so used to it now and you know similar sentiments really about Jarrell Kwanzaa again you know so easy to throw Canate in but Liverpool I, I get the suggestion that they thought that maybe that would be a risk with Canate with him having played for France so recently over the international break they don't want to push him do they he's a risk for muscle injuries so they've got such great faith in Kwanzaa and again he shows it I mean 
this is such a difficult game to get thrown into. The way Brighton attack, that man-for-man -man attack, they make it so difficult for you. They want to drag you out into 1v1 situations. And it's easy in those situations for, for centre-halves to be made to look stupid. But Kwanzaa, he plays the position like he's got so much experience. And I thought the moments where he actually showed some electric pace in, in behind against the Dingra to, to beat into the ball at one point. Something we don't really think he's got in his locker. And, but also real composure as well as that pace brilliant on the ball composed on it you know moments where he did get isolated he didn't dive in he, he won the ball consistently in 1v1 duels I mean four out of six duels won as well so I thought a really really brilliant and, and mature performance from from Kwanzaa really impressed with the way he dealt with the Brighton threat because it's different to anything else you come up against in in the Premier League and I thought he did a really really good job of that now he's helped that alongside him is Virgil van Dijk who I thought again quiet as usual in terms of sides are always going to drag over to Kwanzaa aren't they and try and test him but everything that, that Van Dijk did I thought he did really really well and I also think he, he led Liverpool in the way that he defended he got that line moving up when it needed to he was also he saw the opportunities to spring into midfield when they were there either with the ball or sometimes to, to follow the man out there when it was necessary and pull a man in behind him to cover so led the defence really really well and I think Van Dijk's playing you know fantastically well this season isn't he and another again in difficult circumstances another Another really good performance here and I'll just finish up the defence by talking about Joe Gomez and I thought early in the game got a little bit worried about the fact that he might get targeted a little bit in possession when he was inverting Brighton trying to get numbers around him and pinch the ball there and a couple of times he had a bit of joy with that early in the game but to be fair to him absolutely you know again we know he's the picture of composure he let that go let that slide moved on and I thought a, a really good performance in possession after that 91% uh, percent, uh, pass completion which is impressive when you think how much Brighton press and how difficult they are in that, those situations to pass through uh, I thought he did really really well and picked you know, picked out some really nice pockets of space at times as well so did really well with that um, and 4 out of 10 ground duels won as well which is, is, is not too shabby either so I think you know Joe Gomez he seems to be ahead of Simicast doesn't need to be that sort of backup left back at the moment and, and, and showed again why here today I thought a, a decent performance now I move into midfield and, and start with the holding midfielder Wataru Endo um, I thought again early in the game looked like it was going to be quite easy for Brighton to pick up pick passes around him what they were trying to do constantly was fire the ball into feet and then get a little flick off and then move and run in behind and if Endo was a little bit late to that he was he was left for dead basically if, if Welbeck would turn him and, and get away and so that happened a couple of times early and the fact he wins three out of ground three out of eight ground duels I think shows that you know he's usually above 50 percent on that so he didn't quite have his best game in terms of that but I thought he got to grips with it as the game got on seemed to be there to nick the ball a few more times and got better at timing when he was when he was jumping into challenges so did really well with that and then also a 94% pass completion which again he was so brave for me in possession in terms of taking it in difficult spots, trying to drag players onto it and fire the ball through. Um, it does take real bravery in games like this, but with the way Brighton set up to use the ball in that way, and I think Endo should be absolutely commended for that. He was a big part of Liverpool being so, so dominant across this game. He did a really, really good job in that holding midfield role. What a signing he's been, by the way, 16 million. It's uh, absolutely crazy, isn't it? Now, I thought the two men who were ahead of him as well were really, really good. Again, you've got to be so good in midfield against Brighton and Liverpool absolutely were today for me uh, I'll start with, with Sobber's line I think he absolutely worked his socks off and I think in the first half you could see that his pace was really useful to, to, to sort of keep Brighton quiet when they did get away and they got those little quick passes going Sobber's line was always on there on the cover and did <coughs> really well sorry to to get back and cover off it but he but I think second half what I loved about his performance is he actually came to life in terms of on the ball you know some things weren't coming off for him in the first half but he was working his socks off but second half he combined it all and I thought it, you know in the end a, a really really strong performance from him so three shots three chances created shows how dangerous he was and the goal the 2-1 goal his moment it's a moment of brilliance from him where he drives up the right hand side fires a pass uh, inside to, to Alexis McAllister picks him out in acres of space and McAllister only has to look up and cushion one into Salah for the goal and Sobber's like he doesn't get the assist for that but absolutely crucial to it and I think a, a really really strong performance from him I mean if he can finish the season strongly uh, that, that would be really really helpful for Liverpool because I think he's had a bit of a great start bit of a little dip in the middle then he had that injury and if he can finish strongly he's going to be a big part of what Liverpool do in this period of the season that was a very good start to it for me today really really good in the second half in particular now 
I'll, I'll finish up the midfield by talking about the man who I thought was man of the match. Absolutely outstanding again. I feel like I'm saying that every week at the moment. Alexis McAllister is playing out of his skin at the moment. I mean, we saw him early in the season in that holding role where he did quite well, didn't he? But he's just come. He's just a, you know hit a different level since he's moved into this advanced role and uh, after a sort of shaky couple of first weeks there and uh, just he ran the show today. Brighton must have wished they had him in their midfield still because he was incredible. I mean, I reel off the statistics: five shots, five chances created, 92% pass completion, which is you know he, he's completing passes in the most difficult area, most congested area of the pitch. Always getting those little thick flicks away. Wins five out of 13 ground drills as well. Just an all-round brilliant performance from McAllister. And uh, as I say, for me, man of the match and possibly Liverpool's most important and most creative player at the moment. So yeah, he's absolutely flying, and long may it continue. Now move into the attack now and, and maybe start with Mohamed Salah and I mean the statistics here are absolutely incredible he, I think he has seven shots in the first half and ends the game with 12 shots now he's usually not that wasteful with them he usually gets you know you think if he has 12 shots in a game that is incredible by the way to get in the position that amount of times but he'd usually get a hat trick from that but won't criticise him at all because I think you know it, it wasn't like he missed a load of easy finishes he was getting in positions but maybe difficult ones but the fact he scores the winning goal just sums him up doesn't it you know a little bit wasteful in the game up to that point but the composure he shows when McAllister fires it into him one touch opens his body up and the, and the into the finish into the far corner which we've seen so many times and he is the match winner for Liverpool I've said before, I think that little rest he's had with being injured over the AFCON and, uh, and the period after that, I actually think it might do him a favour. He, he could have a really strong part, uh, finish to this season and if he does, you know, Liverpool will be right up there, won't they, in terms of challenging. And Just finish up the attack by talking about um, Darwin Nunes first and, and two shots and one chance created. Kind of a quiet game for him, actually. Those 12 shots that Salah takes, he maybe took a few shots off Nunes. He usually is unbelievable, isn't he, in terms of generating shots and shooting opportunities. Didn't quite do that today, but I think in games where he is quiet and he doesn't score I think in the past for Liverpool he's been a little bit of a hindrance if he's not scoring if he's not getting the shots off constantly and he absolutely wasn't that today I think it shows the development he's made and, uh, and the steps forward he's taken this season that Yes, he was a little bit quiet, but everything he did, he did with quality. He was good in build-up. His pressing was really good. He was taking, you know, really nice touches in tight areas, firing off, and then hitting the box and trying to get there. So, you know, not not his best performance by any means, but not a bad performance. And he didn't hurt the team in any way. He helped the team. He, he just kept his head down and did his part of the job that he could control, even though he wasn't getting the opportunities. And I think that's something that's worth praising and shows that Nunes has taken real steps forward and he's becoming a more mature striker, more rounded striker. So a decent performance from him today. The, the final attacker is, is Luis Diaz I think start with the goal it's a, a really unconventional finish and a difficult sort of the way the ball breaks to him he has to hook it in does really really well to take that chance and he gets criticised for his finishing so worth mentioning that he also had four shots and two chances created constant outlet for Liverpool worked his socks off defensively whenever Brighton did get those moments where they broke that I spoke about again he was another one like Sobers like getting back in making sure he was creating an extra man in defence and, and getting back and working his socks off so I thought a really really good all-round performance from Luis Diaz and very unlucky to get one chalked off actually that would have made it 3-1 for a, a very marginal offside so a good performance from him I thought now not a lot of time on the pitch for the substitutes one I will mention I thought Harvey Elliott did well when he came on show real control in possession and, and look creative as well with it and also, you know, we're used to him working his socks off as well, aren't we? But he absolutely did that. But, you know, not a, a day where Klopp wanted to use a lot of subs off for a lot of minutes today. I think it was because Liverpool were doing so well in terms of controlling Brighton. He didn't want to disrupt that. Um, and he knew the team was playing well. So, you know, with the scoreline being at 2-1, he, he didn't want to make changes that might disrupt Liverpool. But in the end, he, he made that call and it was absolutely the right one because Liverpool, as I say, convinced him from start to finish in this, even though it was a narrow victory, a very, very important one that moves into the top of the Premier League for now can they stay there I'm about to go downstairs and find out and have a see how Arsenal and Manchester City are getting on at the moment but in the meantime let me know in the comments who you thought your man of the match was today Who, how well you thought Liverpool played do you agree with me that they were magnificent because I really thought that was an impressive performance let me know what you think and as usual if you can like and subscribe always a massive help to me and of course with the games coming thick and fast we know it's Sheffield United coming up next so we'll be back here very very soon and I will also be back on the channel for the build up to that so I'll see you guys very soon.